Hello and welcome to another Skill Coach tutorial. My name is Vince Haley, your Skill Coach. Today we'll be modeling a cookie cutter suitable for 3D printing. By the end of this lesson, you'll be familiar with importing background images for reference, working in the Sketcher environment, and creating solid geometry to export for 3D printing. Before we start, I thought you might want to see the final outcome. I've printed two different cookie cutters. One, the original size, which is about four inches, and the other one scaled up in Simplify 3D, the slicer program used to make the 3D print. And off to the right is a tasty treat, ready to enjoy. So let's get started. Okay, so I've opened an unshaped document, named it, and imported the background image. The next step is to create a sketch to contain that image. So I pick the front face or the front plane and then sketch and insert image. Then I'll select the deer background image and we're prompted to drag a rectangle. We want to make that rectangle approximately the size of, of your cookie cutter. In this case, I'm shooting for about four inches. So I'll make it just a touch taller. And then also I'm adding a couple of points at the midpoint of the horizontal and vertical, and I'll constrain those to the vertical plane midpoint and the horizontal plane. That way the background image scales uh, from the center out. Now we're ready to um, name that first sketch so that I would know that it's uh, the background image at a glance when I look at the, the model tree. Next we'll create the primary curve. Once again picking the front plane as a sketch plane and then using the spline tool to carefully trace around the perimeter of the background image. Now what it'll do is place points at areas where the curvature changes direction and initially I'm just going to rough in the overall geometry and then go back afterwards and make adjustments fine-tuning to correspond with the outer perimeter as best as possible. At this point you want to take your time and place the remaining points as close as possible to the outer perimeter and making sure to capture the the detail and the essence of the the posture around the mouth area there's some extra detail and then once you get to the end a double click will complete the shape now it's a matter of fine tuning the points through editing each one so again adjustments are made by grabbing each point and pulling and the goal is to get as close to the change of color from the light to the dark background, making sure that the points are as relaxed as possible because that will affect the offset. And I'm looking at this realizing that we've got a lot of tight corners based on how small the object is. So we'll see what that means for as we go further. Next is to name it, giving it the deer underscore profile curve name so that uh, we can see that that's the primary profile curve to use to build the rest of the geometry. And then click the check. Next up is to use this profile curve to extrude the geometry that will make up the cookie cutter. So we'll pick extrude from the toolbar. It defaults to solid. Um, we'll eventually want to use a surface and also we'll want to adjust the depth so we're going to go something around 0.437, which is a little bit shallower than, than most cookie cutters, but we want to save some print time. After making that adjustment, we'll toggle to the surface, and that's going to require that we reselect the outer edge profile uh, curve to extrude with. And from there, we get our vertical wall for the cutter. Now, um, one thing that I found is I did have some tight corners and I could not offset that surface. 
So what I decided to do is go in and create a, a curve with a series of cutters so that I could split the boundary in the areas that would not offset. So what you're going to see now is a series of closed uh, shapes that are positioned near the tight areas on the profile of the cookie cutter. And these enclosed shapes we're going to use to split the surface, cut away the regions that failed to offset. And once again, these closed shapes are placed in each of the key areas. I'm using a few constraints to hold them in place. And I believe we've got a total of five locations that, that need a little bit of help to offset. The last one being up around the base of the ear and the forehead. Those shapes made, it's now time to edit the original extrude to include all five pieces in order to have the split affect each area. Having done that, it's the sketch is now modified to include a new nose and left ear profile. Finishing off a new spline in the belly area as well as creating one on the lower hoof. The next step is to make sure each of those new splines are coincident to the original surface extrude and then to add a tangent constraint to make sure that everything flows together nicely from segment to segment. During the process of making the edit, I noticed that the base of the ear did not quite align with the new offset curve in sketch three. So what I'm going to do is use the move boundary tool, select the edge of the offset surface and slide it back a little bit so that it meets up better with the offset curve in sketch three. Then I'll go back in sketch three and edit that end point, make it coincident. And then in the normal view, go ahead and adjust the points so that the offset looks as though it's consistent and matches the shape. I'm also noticing I could use another point. So right click, insert point, and then that gives me an additional point so that I can create a little bit more detail on the forehead and the base of the nose area. And those little tweaks are making it look pretty good. And so now it looks like we have a consistent wall all the way around that represents the thickness of the material that will eventually be 3D printed. Now, I'm noticing that also I need to fix the belly curve. I missed that somehow. So we'll adjust those points, create the necessary tangencies, and, and then double check to see if uh, the shape looks good there. Add another point and adjust those points. And that looks much better. And we'll back out and once again check the lower hoof and make a little tweak there and adjust the flow of, of the curve into the other perimeter and complete the edit. Now we have to extrude surfaces of the new offset 
and what we'll do is extrude up to vertex and choose a vertex of the original offset. That way the height will always be consistent or follow each other. As I was completing the step, I realized that I didn't toggle from new to add. So it's important to go back in and edit the extrude and under the dialog change to add. And you can see that that outer surface now all turned to a dark blue. The next step um, is to prepare to close off the top and bottom or cap them off. And so what we'll do is create a plane that's parallel to the front and through the upper vertex of the extrude. Now I noticed in the model tree that my inner surface was still in multiple pieces. So I'm using a Boolean to pick all of those light blue segments and unite them to each other to become one surface. And in the model tree now I have a surface one and a surface two. Now using the enclose feature, I'll grab the interior surface and the two planes and close off the volume, creating part one. I'll follow up with the top and bottom planes again and the exterior um, surface, so enclosing that to create part two, which will be the outer profile. So now a Boolean operation is used, taking the interior part and trimming it out now we have the volume that represents the cookie cutter. So now I'll head up to the toolbar and select the fillet command. And we're going to add a few rounds in some of the internal edges. We'll choose a radius of about 07 and then walk around the object finding all the internal edges. And the reason for making these fillets is so that the next feature, which will be a chamfer that's going to make our knife edge for cutting the dough, we want it to be able to uh, track all the way around the perimeter with a, a tangent chain and having internal rounds allows that to happen. So now we'll pick the chamfer tool and select one edge and it automatically defaults to 45 at point two, changing that value to 03 to verify that it'll run. And now I'm changing to a two distant, keeping the point 03 and then um, having a greater distance on the vertical, uh, something like point one. And now we can see that the entire chamfer feature has run completely around the edge and that should give us a, more of a slicing effect when we press the cookie cutter into the dough. And then the last step is to export this geometry so that we can take it into Simplify 3D. So I'm right clicking on the part, selecting export, giving the file a name. In this case, it's going to be fawn underscore cutter, cookie cutter and then format is STL and we'll change up to inches since that's the units we were using. And with that, we'll say, okay. And then it'll process and download in the lower right corner of the display.